Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, we'll work on this animation in After Effects. I'll show you how to get your project from this to this. I have attached the working file in the description below. You can download it and follow along. Let's get started. All right, let's get started. Let's go inside After Effects. This is my first composition with my original animation. Let's go take a look. Basically what I wanted to animate is a circle just coming in from different sides and keep rotating in a good rhythm. And then after a couple rounds, they're gonna just separate from each other and disappear from the scene. That's the basic setup of my animation. Let's just quickly go through the animation. For the first two layers, all I did is a position animation going through this pass, coming into the center. And if I select both layers, you can see this motion pass that the circle is traveling along. And then one is traveling, it's also becoming bigger in scale. And if I solo these two layers, this is our animation. Very simple and straightforward for the first two circles. And then after the first two circles, I have these two outline circle coming in almost like the same way. And then they intersect with each other, rotating for a couple rounds controlled by the null object. And then they would separate. While the two big circle rotates, I also have this small circle coming in, in the center, scaling up. And then after a couple rounds of rotation, it just scales down again. Everything just goes outside. That's basically the animation setup. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how I can take this animation all the way to this animation that we have. They are essentially having the exact same animation, but just a couple style that we would use to make it more polished and more premium. And the first thing I want to talk about is the gradient color. In the original animation, we only have these outline stroke, which is not looking so nice. If I add the adjustment layer and put a deep glow on top of it, let me just adjust the deep glow setting a little bit to tone it down. However, we still need to do some other stylization. And the first one we want to talk about is gradient color. In terms of gradient color, I want to add gradient fill color on all these layers. And I'll demonstrate how we do that. First of all, we already have a fill color on this first circle. All we need to do is go to click on this layer, go to fill, and then let's change it to gradient color. I want to change this color into a yellow orange gradient color something like this, and then I need to zoom in, make sure we adjust the softness of the gradient. You can see these two handles here. That's how we adjust the gradient directions. I like how that looks. And now I need to change this one into a gradient color as well. You can see this one has already got some gradient. It's a radial gradient. Let's change it to a linear gradient, click on OK. And I still want to keep it as a darker blue to a lighter blue gradient. And after we have the gradient, you can see it's already got some good looking inner circle here. It's got this shade that you can see going through the circle. It's making the circle looking more premium. I also want to do the same thing for these outer circle as well. For example, for this one here, I'll just go to add a fill gradient color, click OK. And then let's also do this blue gradient. I think the gradient looks fine. Let me just zoom in. I just need to go select this direction here to make sure we have something that's soft. I think that looks pretty good. And for the stroke, I'll turn it off for now. Don't want to worry about the stroke. Next, I want to color these two gradient as well. Let's do it again. Go to fill and then add a gradient color. This one, I want to change it to a yellow gradient similar to this inner circle here. So I could just go click on this one, put a bright yellow, and then the other end, I'll put it orange color here, something like this. And I'll delete the stroke for now. 
for the last one, I would go inside, add a gradient color, turn this one into a purple, darker purple to a lighter purple. After we add the gradient color, this is what the animation is going to look like. If I turn off the deep glow without any glowing, this is what the animation is going to look like. All right, that's still far from what we want. So the next thing we want to do is to add a gradient stroke around the object that we have in the scene. For example, for the inner circle, these two, I want to add a gradient stroke. Let's go click on the stroke and then add this linear gradient. Click on OK. In terms of the color, let's do a yellow and maybe a green color. And I'll drag the green in the center. Maybe this part I want to do like a almost like a blue. So it'd be going from yellow to green to blue, something like that. I think that works. And for the stroke width, I want to change it to three pixels to make it thinner. In terms of the gradient stroke, you can still adjust the handle. You can see this little dot here. You can adjust the handle to change the direction of the gradient. If I turn on my deep glow setting, and you can see this object is having a glowing stroke that goes around. I think that stroke works for now. And I know it's not looking as good, but after we put on a couple more styles later on, it's gonna look fantastic. So the next thing we're gonna do the same thing. We wanna add the gradient stroke on the second circle. Go click on linear gradient, and then it's automatically applying the same stroke color around this circle here. I think that should work. After we add a stroke, this is the animation we got. Now that's the animation we got after we have the gradient color and the gradient stroke. So the next thing I want to talk about is the fine edge effect. Let's group these last four layers together. Command Shift C, call this one circles. And then let's go inside effects and presets. Let's go look for fine edges effect, click on it and turn this one into invert. Now, if I toggle the timeline, you can see what happens is, is almost like adding a stroke to our composition and is highlighting all the outline of my animation inside. And since we already added the grading color on all our objects, so the stroke is becoming a outline stroke now. Let's just add a deep glow effect and see what it looks like now. Put it on top. Now all of a sudden you can see this is our animation. That looks pretty premium and uh, I like how it looks now. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will publish new content every week. Click the subscribe button to level up your animation skills and get inspired with great animation every week. You can also join our exclusive community to hang out with motion designers to grow together. Check the link in the description below. Now what we can do is we can take it one step further. After we have the fine edges effect, we can also duplicate this layer. And then with a the new layer, we're gonna delete the fine edge effects. We're gonna put the original animation at the bottom and then offset it by one frame so that it's not only gonna show the original animation when there's an offset in timing, but also showing our outline animation with the fine edges effect on top. And this is what the animation is gonna look like. Let's see. And that's how we created this almost like a trail behind our main dots. And if we want to duplicate it again, let me duplicate the circle composition with a fine edge effect again, Command D. Now I just want the original animation to be at the bottom. And then it's the first thing that animates in. And the two duplication with the fine edges effect is gonna come in after one frame and the other one is gonna come in after two frames. So there's an offset in the animation that we have and that's the effect that we have. We're gonna get this kind of animation after we did that. And since we only have two dots at the end, I want to duplicate the dots again and then make it four dots so that there is a symmetrical animation going on. Let's go inside the circle. So these two dots are gonna be from these two backgrounds and then they're shrinking in size. 
so I want to maybe from this point on, when they are overlapping, we can duplicate these two layers, Command D, and cut it, put it at the bottom, hit U on the keyboard. So when they become this big, we can actually from here, just delete the null. Let me add in another null object here to control the rotation of these two duplicated layers. And let me just duplicate this way so that they are offset from the previous two. And now I can delete the null four, pairing these two objects to the null one again. And now they should be rotating in harmony like this. So that's exactly how I want it to be rotating. However, I want to change the color for these one as well. So for circle five, I can probably change it to a green color. And then for circle four, I can get it back to a blue color. And now we have four different colors. Let's go back to the previous composition. This is the animation that we got so far. It's already looking pretty cool. I like how it looks. And the last thing we want to talk about is the echo effect. These two circles coming in at the beginning, we can add echo effects to these two to give it a smear looking animation. So let's search for echo, add it on top of the first circle here. And what we can do is we can give it five copy of echoes and then change this echo time to 0.002 and change the operator to maximum. If I duplicate this echo effect and then copy it onto this other dot, let's see what the animation looks like. So when the dot's coming in, it's becoming more organic. You can see there's a trail behind the circle and the trail is actually all combined together, almost like a fluid liquid bubble that's coming in or like an organic circle coming in instead of the round circle at the beginning. It just gave the circle much more momentum, much more velocity, and it makes the animation more organic, I think. So after we added the echo effect, this is the animation that we get. And what the echo effect does help is it's also helping with our gradient stroke that we added previously. So if we don't have the echo effect, if I turn it off, you can see the gradient stroke that we added earlier is not that visible. It just all blended together. But once we add the echo effect, it's multiplying the number of outline and you can see it gives our gradient stroke a much more prominent look and just adds another layer of detail to our animation. And this is looking super cool with the echo and the gradient stroke. Now we're approaching the end of our animation. Before we go forward, I also wanna do some experiment with the animation that we have. Remember we did duplicate our main circle backgrounds two times, and then we added the fine edges effect. However, if you move this layer around in time, it's just gonna give you a bunch of different variations in terms of the animation and the combination between the three different compositions. They're animating the same. The animation is the same, it's just gonna give you a different variation, right? So whatever you do, you can find the perfect offset with your three different duplicates. And with a different offset, you're gonna get a different kind of animation. If I do an offset like this, you can see we're showing much more original animation in the original color. And that's a different look than if we only offset it by one or two frames. And now you can see approaching at the end here, we'll get this beautiful looking a bunch of circles colliding together and they're all animating in the grid rhythm. And you can see this is kind of pattern that we get. It's a random pattern. However, we're able to achieve it by controlling the effects and also controlling the spacing and timing of our animation. So this is a really good way to explore if you just randomly position these layers to offset the layers a bit more to get different kinds of animation. I even like how this frame looks. This frame looks pretty nice as well. 
if I drag this one and now you have this like beautiful looking shape here. So you can explore with your own animation once you have it and then you can duplicate the layers, use the find edge effect. You're gonna get a ton of different variations with the same animation. So for now, I'm just gonna stick with our original plan with just one frame offsets for the first layer and then another frame offset for the second layer. Let's go back to the last one, which is a chromatic aberration. Basically, we just group all the layers together and then we're gonna have three different copies of the same final animation. For each copy, we're gonna add a shift channel effects and the first one is gonna have the red channel on only and then the second one, green channel on only and then the third one, blue channel on only and then we're gonna make all three layers into add modes this way, if I zoom in, we can offset the color information of different alpha channel to give it a chromatic aberration look. You can see if I move the position property of this layer, the middle layer, it's giving me a different look. And there's some offset color information that's giving me more detail to my projects. After we did the chromatic aberration, this is gonna be our final animation. Let's take a look. That's it with this video. Hope you liked it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for our next project. Let me know if this video is helpful in the comments down below and what other videos or tutorials you'd like to see on this channel. I love to hear your feedback. Also, let me know in the comments if you'd like to use a different effect or do anything differently from this video. Let's keep sharing and grow together. One last thing, don't forget to join our exclusive Discord community to hang out with fellow designers. Stay on top of industry trends and grow together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.